mentioned the Charlotte Hornets when you first came into the NBA. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned also, you know, the Wizards that had a, you know, veteran team as well. You know, you had Teron Liu, NBA champion, Charles Oakley, of course, Michael Jordan, Jerry Stackhouse, Larry Hughes, the list goes on and on. Now, what, how would you compare the two? I mean, you can't really compare the two teams, but what was the, the feeling like, okay, you come into a veteran team in Charlotte as a rookie. Now you are the veteran in Washington. <laughs> what was kind of like, you know, the difference between the two for you um, <laughs> being still that point guard that was at the top of his game? Well, coming with Washington, you got to think, I'm still kind of compared to a rookie because Michael Jordan and Charles Oakley, <laughs> Patrick Jones was on the staff. Those guys were before me. They came out in 84. <laughs> those guys were still like so i'm still like and then mike was still was the greatest at the time so i'm coming in being maybe what my i want to say my fifth year or something like that so i'm still kind of a young player in the league so i'm still looking up to these guys i'm, I'm walking in the locker room knowing i'm going there and i see michael jordan in the corner i'm i don't want to look be obvious and all that so i'm, I'm kind of like and i'm still in awe i'm giving a girl i'm here to go to practice with it so right. But it was a great time for me being in Washington with those guys. Me coming in at that moment, I'm a veteran, but also I have to. I have these guys. Well, it's difficult coming. In, not it's 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 kind of it's difficult coming in on a ten day contract because or two ten day contract because you coming in in the middle of the mm -hmm. season off top. So you got to come in and your focus is you want you don't want to rock the boat. You want to make sure everything you coming in. You got to feel the system out because you don't really know the system. You just kind of. Mm -hmm. You know, back then we weren't watching no. You get called up by a team. We weren't taking no computer trying to see what how how the game was, how they was playing games, or whatever. You come in, they take you through a few practices or whatever. All of a sudden, you get a few plays that you aren't that you cool with, and you go out there and play. So your job was mm -hmm. was come in, relieve, come in for a minute, spare the guy that maybe hurt or whatever for maybe right. hundred days, or if you if you you know good enough or whatever to stay for the remainder of the year, that's cool. I mean, that's pretty much it. You come in. You not really worry about hurting nobody's feelings or whatever like that, because it's about you personally trying to make it and trying to kind of come in and, and get a paycheck, really, and and understand mm -hmm. and try to look. If you don't solidify mm -hmm. yourself with that team, you trying to open doors for yourself with another team. Exactly. So when you come in, yeah, Michael Jordan is over there. You got to try to fit in, but you you especially when you coming from the CBA or G League or something like that, where you know you the man, you putting up big points. Now you got to downgrade yourself unless you come into a role like that. You you take your opportunities, but now you don't come in and you don't overstep your boundary. And I think that's mm -hmm. that that's what helped me to become one of the the all time guys at being called up because I was able to come in and figure out different systems and articulate mm -hmm. what they was trying to do and not rock the boat, but also be a stabilizer. You know, and they they love that when you can come in and stabilize the team. You don't lose anything with with myself, um, a great glue guy, great locker room guy get along with everybody. I'm reliable, you know, so that was a great thing for me. So I was able to relate with those guys. So me coming in as a rookie and I kept the same intensity. I came in and worked hard as a rookie. I came in and worked even harder as a, as a veteran, as a 10 day, 20 day guy, nothing changed. Only thing is my confidence got, got better because I done been in the league. I know I belong. I'm just waiting for the right team to, to take me on and take me for the remainder of the year. Mm -hmm. I was just, unfortunate. I got stuck in a lot of situations where teams, you know, they was carrying 15. They won't allow nobody to come in. They And, you know, those guys, they was there for the remainder of the year. The, I, for me, the lockout of 98 hurt me. After three years, two years in Charlotte, one year in Denver, the lockout hit. That was my best year on a team with Dick Mata and all those guys. My, that was my best year in, uh, in, in, in Denver. Then the lockout hit in, 90, in 98, and I wound up going overseas. And back then in the NBA, if you go overseas, you constantly keep going teetering the fence on NBA overseas. You kind of get mm -hmm. lost in the shelf because it's a new crop of guys coming in each and every year. So your name has to stay locked in mm -hmm. to the NBA. But that was my best year. And I got locked in uh, overseas. And, that, and matter of fact, I stayed two years overseas. I played in Greece and I played in Olympiacos, Greece, and I played in Barcelona, Spain. Two of the best teams in Europe. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I didn't lose anything. It's just... You know, that just kind of kept me from being straight in the NBA. Yeah.